Support for this series comes from NPR sponsor GoDaddy, making a different future starts with you. That's why GoDaddy does more than help you find a name you can create, you can sell and get found online. So any small business can be a driving force to create change or build an empire. So whatever it is you have in mind that will help make a different future, find everything you need to get started at GoDaddy.com because the future isn't decided yet. It's up to us to make it happen. Start different at GoDaddy.com. Hey, it's Guy here, and welcome to How I Built This Fellows Edition from NPR. For this year's How I Built This Fellowship program, we selected 10 early stage entrepreneurs looking to take their big ideas to the next level. Today, you're gonna hear from Pierre Paul. Pierre's company is called We Hear You. He's developing a sign language translator that turns American Sign Language into audible speech and vice versa. Pierre was born in Brazil and was around five years old when he moved with his parents to the US. His family still watched a lot of Brazilian TV and kept up with Brazilian traditions around the house while Pierre was trying to learn a new language. So when I came to the US, I remember just struggling with my accent, struggling with understanding English and like teeter-tottering between Portuguese and English. I'm this little kid who barely understood Portuguese, definitely didn't understand English. And I remember kids just not understanding what it means to be a foreigner with an accent, what it means to be a foreigner with broken English. And teachers were talking about potentially holding me back because my English wasn't up to par and faced a lot of xenophobia, a lot of racism, a lot of negative backlash for being different. So when my parents stopped giving us as much of the Brazilian culture that we used to have in the house, it really bothered me because I was like, I understand why they're doing this. They're caring about my academics and my progression. But I decided that if I was going to forget and unlearn Portuguese to master English, I was going to master. I wanted to be able to have a voice, just understanding and crafting words in a way that ensure that anybody who had an exceptionality, whether it be something vocally or something physical, I wanted to be able to let them know that they are not wrong or they don't have a problem for being different than the status quo. And this idea of like mastering expression, ex especially verbal expression, has really been yeah. a theme in your life. Like I read that in high school, you were you were like one of the top public speakers in, in Ohio. Like this, so you were like a speech and debate kid in high school. Yeah. Absolutely. Speech and debate was kind of my claim to fame. I remember my school would send me to different tournaments around the U.S., some notable ones, the Harvard tournament, Bethel Park. And I was just able to compete on this national level. And I did end up being one of the top speakers in Ohio, one of the top speakers in the nation. And it gave me an opportunity to receive a speech scholarship to the top speech school at the time, Bradley University. And I was ecstatic. So you get to Bradley and yeah. um, on the speech scholarship. And I guess mm -hmm. while you were there, um, while you were at Bradley, you worked on a, a, a project, I guess it's called the Capstone Project, maybe your, your final year project. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I'm at Bradley. I don't sleep very often. Um, so late at night, my mind just runs wild and I really concern myself with the problems that I see around me, the things happening in the world. And there was one night where I was just feeling complacent. I was feeling complacent where I was. And I was like, I don't like that. So one night I was scouring the internet, looking at different problems around the world and different things that don't have solutions. And one that hit me was the fact that individuals with hearing exceptionalities, whether it be their hard of hearing or their deaf, have a hard time communicating at food establishments. And it was as simple as they try to order food, whether writing it on a piece of paper or a napkin and hand it to the associate and the associate is dismissive or the associate doesn't know American Sign Language and they're not able to have their freedom and autonomy to order in their natural language. And when I realized that was a problem, I was like, okay, come on. We have Google Translate for every single language. Like, what are we missing here? Why has this not been done? And so with that realization, I just couldn't not do anything about it. So as cliche as it sounds, I remember finally falling asleep and I had a dream about the specific sign language translator. And it's funny, I had a dream that I was in this McDonald's and I was using this device. And I woke up the next morning and I contacted my best friend who's actually now the COO of We Hear You. And I'm like, hey, you will not believe what I'm thinking of. What did you tell them? So when I contacted Bethany, I was like, I had this dream 
that there's a sign language translator that we can create and it's going to look like this and it's going to act like this. And she asked one question. It's funny. This is why we named the company We Hear You. She asked, why do you keep doing what you do in the way that you do it? And I said, well, it's because I hear the struggles of the people around me. So when people ask us why, the answer is because we hear you. We hear what you're facing. We hear what you're going through. And that's what drives us. Basically, you come up with this idea. I mean, you're thinking there's Google Translate. There are all these ways for people who speak different languages to communicate. But it's not easy for people who are deaf or, or hard of hearing to communicate with those who aren't. I mean, there's some, and there's some examples. There's a, a, a famous pizzeria in San Francisco where all the employees are deaf. And in Washington, D.C., there's Gallaudet University. And um, there mm -hmm. are cafes around there where all the employees are deaf. But, but it's still... This is a problem that needs to be solved, right? You can't just walk walk into a store if you are hard of hearing or deaf and easily order if that person can't read lips. And it's challenging for the cross communications. So you're thinking, how can I solve this problem? Absolutely. And so I started going to every single professor and every single professional who might have an expertise in this area. And I was told no so many times. I was told, really great idea, can't be done. Really great idea, we don't know where to start. This can't be done. And I refuse to give up. And I remember I'm on the last two people that I could possibly ask. And I tell him the idea. And he's like, I like it. Let's do it. <laughs> and I, I remember being shocked. I was like, are you kidding? Are you like yanking my chain? Like, are we messing around here? Um, but he was like, no, I love you. He's like, I'm super busy. But I have another professor who's going to love to help you. We have some students who interned for NASA who've been looking for a passion project. Wow. And just like that, we got started. We did research. And I had already done copious amounts of research leading up to here. So I handed them this doc that's like 100 pages. And I'm like, this is what I know. Wow. These are the problems that I've seen in the past. These are the things that I want to be in the future. Let's get it started. All right. So now you started working on this. And yeah. I know that in December of 2020, you were able to put out a proof of concept. How does it work? So 2020, we were able to release our first prototype which was a sign language translator that could take finger spelling. Finger spelling is, briefly explain how that works. Yep, so there are different letters, A, B, C, D, every single- L Letter has a shape with your, with your hand, okay. Absolutely, yep. so it took finger spelling and then it would string it together once the word was complete. And then we added a spell check function. And we started in coffee shops because coffee shops are extremely popular and it was just a great place with a lower vocabulary so that we could expand. So we started with L-A-R-G-E, large C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. And this is like an iPhone or like an iPad that was recording So you? Absolutely. So Android tablets, one of the things that we really wanted to make sure that our system was, we didn't want somebody to have to buy a complicated glove or a complicated camera. We wanted to work on any camera. Just an app that would be on, on any camera. Exactly. And so... We put it in the coffee shop and we received so much good, but so much bad feedback. <laughs> and it was a lot of, this is great. Where's the full gesture capability? Full gesture capability, meaning somebody using American Sign Language. Exactly. That would then be automatically translated by pointing your iPhone or your Android device at that person. It would come back to you in, in either text or in, in, in audio. Exactly. So essentially it'd be large coffee instead of spelling it out and then it verbalizes and then the backwards compatibility, you can talk into it and say, would you like cream and sugar? And it would sign back, would you like cream and sugar? Wow. We understood that finger spelling really doesn't fully encapsulate American Sign Language, but it's a good start. So in a perfect world, once your vision yeah. is fully realized, tell me how you would love for this to work on a day-to-day -day basis. I go into a shop and um, the person taking my order is deaf and how would we interact? So in the perfect world, you walk into a shop um, and you see a tablet set up there. And so you walk up to the counter and you order whatever you want. I would like an Italian melt with a large coffee, cream and sugar, whatever fantastical thing that you would like. And our system picks it up. You don't even know that you're doing it because you're looking the associate in the eye and the system picks it up and then it signs back exactly what you said. Wow. And then they sign it back into the system, verbalize it for you. And that can be a fluid conversation. And then let's say you're meeting with somebody there who's a part of the deaf and hard of hearing community. You sit down, you prop your phone up facing them, and you guys have that conversation the same way that you and I can talk right now. There's no barrier that's blocking that ability to say, hey, have a great day. How are you doing? 
And that's that's what I foresee. I see this being something that everybody has in their pocket. It's just so remarkable. I mean, you you didn't grow up around people who are deaf. You didn't have a, a, a direct connection to the deaf community, but you saw a challenge and you pursued it. And there was a reason why you pursued this challenge. And I, I, I have to imagine that it has something to do with a bigger philosophy that you have around inclusion. Absolutely. Diversity and inclusion should never be the afterthought of innovation. It should be the foundation. It's always been a philosophy of mine because I came up to the United States and I was excluded so frequently. I was made to feel like I did not have a place to belong. And when you grow up with that as a kid, getting out of that mindset and then growing into a world and seeing that it still persists sometimes, it kind of sucks. Like just put simply, it kind of sucks. Yeah. And so I just love helping people any way that I can. And so one thing that I've really been trying to make sure that I'm not doing, I don't want to come across as a hearing savior because the deaf community is far too strong and far too capable to need a hearing savior. All I am is an ally who is hoping to aid in a journey that has been long fought for. It's been something that you can read about. People have tried time and time again to create a sign language translator, but they do it from a hearing centric perspective. And so it's just been a lot of consulting with the deaf community, a lot of tough conversations, a lot of no's, a lot of why you's, and it's been a lot of why not me. That's Pierre Paul, founder and CEO of We Hear You. Thanks for watching How I Built This Fellows Edition. For more information about the fellows, go to summit.npr.org slash fellows. This message comes from NPR sponsor GoDaddy. Making a different future starts with you. GoDaddy helps you create, sell, and get found online so you can create change or build an empire. Start different at GoDaddy.com.